Welcome. So what we're going to do today is make a soup tureen with lid. So this is about five and a half pounds of clay that I'm centering here. I'm going to do this in chapters from the top down just to get it in control initially. So when I'm centering, I'm using the, the heel of my hand um, to either push away from me if I'm pushing in the back or sometimes I'll use my fingers to pull towards me. Just keep your hands together and your arms locked down. A lot of water is helpful uh, when you're coning up and coning down. And then when I'm coning down, I'm taking my dominant hand on just off of the center at the top and I've got my non-dominant hand on the side and um, I'm pushing down and away from me. Again, with the side of my hand, not the fleshy center part. Um, there's a little more oomph if you're using the, the side of your hand. So you're going to push down and away from you nice and slow with your hand speed, but quick with your wheel speed. Use a lot of water and once you get this centered, um, and you'll know that because your hand doesn't dance, dance um, when you set it on the clay, and you're looking for it to be centered on the top and centered on the side. Um, and then once we get that done, we'll go ahead and um, talk about opening. Okay, next we're going to go to open this bowl. So I usually start with my thumbs because of the curve that they give me. I can kind of follow that. And then I'll kind of push down with my index finger at an angle. And I'm pushing with my dominant hand as the hand on the interior of the bowl. And then I take my non-dominant hand and use that to apply pressure um, at an angle. And once I've got that done, um, and remember to go slow with your hands when you're opening um, so that you don't throw your inside wall off center. Uh, your wheel can be going fast, but your, the slower your hands move, the more control you'll have. Um, once I've got that initial um, hole opened in the middle, I'm going to take my fingers, you'll see, and kind of scoop them following that curve towards me. There's a million different ways to go about doing this to make the rim wider. Um, this is just one of the methods that I use. And once we do that, we're going to start pulling up our walls. So I'll take the sponge on the outside and then um, I'll leave water on the interior wall and my inside hand is kind of forming um, a backwards C as I pull up. My outside hand is coming straight up that outside wall with the sponge and the sponge will stay wet longer than if you were just using your fingers. Um, to get a little bit of height, the trick is to keep your inside hand a little more passive than the outside. And then you're going to just pull this up, um, get your height before you start thinking about the shape of the bowl. Once I get to the height that I want, I'll start shaping by pushing from the inside out a little bit more. So that's when you can bring that pressure um, a little bit more aggressively on the interior of the bowl that you're throwing. Um, and then the other thing I want to mention with big, bigger bowls or any kind of bowls really um, is that I like to and prefer to find the bottom of the bowl or the curve of the bottom of the bowl in the trimming process. That's not to say it can't be done in the throwing process, but uh, if you're just learning, it is more stable to have that extra clay down at the bottom um, to support the weight at the top. So that's just a, a little trick. Um, I'll start that curve kind of a little bit below the middle of the pot if you were looking at it from the side.
Alrighty, so after you find your shape, your height, all that good stuff, you're going to take your rib, and the nice thing about these ribs is um, they can, if you pinch them at the top and the bottom, they'll follow any shape um, that you're looking for. So that's what I'm doing here to clean up the outside. I'm using the flat side of my rib to kind of squeegee off the slip there. And then I'll do the same thing with the curvy side of my rib on the interior of the bowl. And um, that is helping to f do a final compression on the floor, which is really important. If you noticed, I compressed a lot as I was throwing it to avoid S cracks. Um, and then this rib kind of gives that nice final push um, to try to avoid those cracking issues and get all that water out of there, which will also cause cracking. Okay, and next you're going to give your rib a little smooch with your chamois and uh, kind of refine that. And then you're going to take your wooden knife tool. You take the angled side of your tool and come above the area that you want to cut and slowly work your way down until you've got that tool at the back. Um, and then you can undercut that with a needle tool and then just peel that ring away. Try to hold these tools with both hands so you have control. Um, and then after you've got that excess clay down at the bottom removed so that you have less to trim later, I take the tip of the wooden knife tool and give myself a little guide for my cut wire. So I'm going to wrap that cut wire around my fingers like dental floss, keeping my thumbs on the bat on both sides. I pull that wire towards me and undercut it so that the project can move as it dries. Next we'll get to the lid, so we'll be back in a jiff. I'm going to throw a lid that has the flange in the lid. So the flange will actually sit on the inside of this pot. And so I want to measure at the widest point on the inside. So it looks like that. You're going to tighten this little wing nut here if it's loose. And then you want to set that on your bucket so that you don't mess up that measurement with your tools or throwing something down on your wheel. Set it on your bucket just out of the way so you can still get your hands in your water. Okay, so we're going to get this lid going. So we're going to pat this down, seal it to the wheel, and center it just like we did the bowl. centered you're going to take your calipers and measure you don't want to center all the way to your caliper measurement because then when you open your lid which essentially is an, a big bowl as well it's going to be too big so you want to measure uh, when you're centering with about two fingers to the measurement of the um, edge of that caliper tooth so it doesn't matter whether you're which side of your calipers you're looking at. I'm looking at the inside claw because I find it easier to gauge. Um, but just make sure that you're centering your clay smaller than your caliper measurement. By at least two fingers, I find, typically gets me where I want to be. Um, but, you know, that's up to you as long as it's smaller. Okay, so the opening for this lid, um, so as I mentioned, it's just a big bowl that we're throwing, the difference being that it's got a flange in the rim. 
um, is that we're going to open it the same, but what you want to make sure of is how deep you open, because how deep you open uh, is going to determine the height of the hat of your lid. So if you open it very far down, it's going to be um, like an egg shape. If you open it a little more shallow, the curvature when you flip it over will be less of an arch. So just kind of keep that in mind in terms of the overall look um, in the end. And this is always just kind of trial and errors to what you like. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to experiment and play around with different depths of different lids. We're opening this and making sure that we compress really well as we go along with our sponge and our fingers. We're gonna pull the wall of this up just like we did the bottom of the terrine. Um, the main difference being that I am leaving a little bit more clay at the rim to allow for that flange. And the reason I want to put the flange in the rim is so that I can glaze these two things independent of each other and fire them um, separately so that when you have the lid off of the terrain, you don't have that um, waxed, unglazed part. It's a little nicer in the presentation. to here I'm gonna make this a little bit wider now so that this measurement comes closer to the inside tooth of this tool so I've drawn a little line here so I can see where my flange would actually hit so see that line I drew a line in the center and that's just visually so I can see this lid's gonna sit, this part of the flange will sit down inside the bowl. And if I'm here, it's gonna be way too small. So I need to widen that out a little bit. I also, as I'm throwing, wanna leave this part here thicker because I need the clay to be able to put a flange in it. So just as you're pulling up, make sure that you are not compressing um, or thinning this rim out as you go. You're releasing your pinch pressure. made it too wide so the answer to that is to squeeze it back in from the outside this is called collaring okay that's just about right so now I'm going to take and push from the outside down. So if you'll notice, my fingers and my left hand are just hanging out at the rim and my right index is pushing down on the outside of that line that I drew there to create this flange. going to do the normal ribbing and cleaning up with your chamois and such as you would on any other bowl. Um, just keep in mind that you have to keep checking your measurement because when you push from the inside out or vice versa you're changing the dynamic of that. And 
again with the wooden knife tool. We're gonna cut down at a little bit more of an angle so that we've got less work to do in our trimming. And then we're gonna undercut that with our needle tool, undercut the whole thing, and then gauge whether at the end of class we can move it or if we have to leave it on the bat. If we leave it on the bat, just put it on the board that you were given so that it can be easily moved around if necessary for room since we have limited shelf space. along with the soup terrine in the next video and um, we'll also uh, show you how to make some ladles in some subsequent videos to go along with your soup bowl. Thanks for watching!